The earth is scattered with the ruins of empires who once thought themselves to be eternal. And it's about two weeks into the holiday special thing I have going on, and I still haven't provided you with a math snack. Which is not cool, of course. So, for your consumption, today I present to you the delicious math snack that is pie. But this isn't just any video or math snack about pi. We're talking about expressing pi as an infinite product. And most of you would be familiar with this infinite product form for pi or pi by 2, known as the Wallace product. And the standard way to derive the Wallace product is using integrals. That's what's found in textbooks anyway. But that's pretty boring, to be honest. I mean, it's a rather tedious calculation. I'm not a huge fan of it. There is a much cooler proof for the Wallace product. And it's a lot shorter or average in comparison to the standard textbook method. And that really cool approach involves a really cool tool. What I'm talking about is the infinite product form or the factorization of the sine function sine of z. And I derived this infinite product in a previous video, link in the description below. In that video I used Fourier series, I generated a series expansion for the cotangent function, then integrated that series expansion to get the infinite product for the sine function, and that was extremely cool. But if you're not familiar with Fourier series, then there is an alternative proof and that proof is proof by word of Euler. Yes, I'm serious. Proof by word of Euler. Because for Euler, this was all very intuitive. It was clear as day to him. Given that we can factorize a polynomial using its zeros, just use the fact that the sine function has infinitely many zeros. And hence we have an infinite product form or factorization for the sine function. Okay. I mean... It's Euler, so good enough for me. I mean, would you really want to challenge Euler? We're talking about the Leonard Euler. Catherine of Russia requested Euler to come back to Russia to conduct research work over there. That is the level of mathematical riz my boy had. So, by the it's intuitive for Euler proof, we have the factorization on the right-hand side being the first zero of the sine function we know about is z equal to zero, right? So we have z minus zero, which is just z. That's the first term of the factorization. Then we have this infinite product over the positive integers k. And why am I only using the positive integers? Just give me a moment. We have the infinite product over k of 1 minus z squared by pi squared times k squared, which makes perfect sense, because for z equal to k times pi or z equal to negative k times pi, the sine function would be 0. And the right-hand side agrees with this, because plugging in z equal to k times pi or negative k times pi in both cases, you get z squared equal to pi squared by k squared. So you have some cancellation and 1 minus 1 being 0. So yeah, everything checks out. But how on earth does this beautiful equation lead to a short length or average proof for the Wallace product? Well, all we need is plugging in z equal to pi by 2. That gives me, on the left-hand side, sine of pi by 2, which is 1, and on the right, I have pi by 2 times the infinite product over k of 1 minus z squared is pi squared by 4, so we have 4 times pi squared by k squared in the denominator, and we have the cancellation of pi squared terms, okay? So we have 1 equal to pi by 2 times the infinite product over k of 1 minus 1 by 4k squared. And we can simplify this term further by writing it as pi by 2 times the infinite product over k of 
4k squared minus 1 divided by 4k squared. Now we can factorize the numerator here as 2k plus 1 and 2k minus 1. So we have pi by 2 times the infinite product over k of 2k minus 1 divided by 2k times 2k plus 1 divided by 2k. And nothing on the right hand side is 0, which means everything's invertible. So we can expand using the infinite, uh, using the multiplicative inverse of this infinite product, which gives me pi by 2 equal to 1 times the infinite product just being the same infinite product over k of 2k divided by 2k minus 1 times 2k divided by 2k plus 1, which is pretty cool. But now we're going to expand the right-hand side to uncover a really nice result. For k equal to 1, we have 2 by 1 times 2 by 3. For k equal to 2, we have 4 by 3 times 4 by 5. For k equal to 3, we have 6 by 5 times 6 by 7, and on and on we go, which means that we have 2 squared times 4 squared times 6 squared times 8 squared, and so on and so forth, divided by 1 is just 1 squared, times 3 squared, times 5 squared, times 7 squared, and so on and so forth, which is extremely cool, meaning that pi by 2 is actually the square of the infinite product of even integers divided by the infinite product of the odd integers, which is extremely cool, and I find this equation extremely beautiful. That concludes our average-sized proof for the Wallace product. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.